Shabbos Dav Kuv Zayim. Today's email comes to us from Calvin Yosef Mori. Thanks for all the great shiurim he writes. I haven't missed any shiurim. My wife and I converted to Orthodox Judaism seven years ago. They have an apartment in Malia Dumim and in Columbus, Ohio. And his wife wrote a book about their journey called From Rose Bowl to Rashi. He's a former Ohio State football player. And he played in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles and then in Chicago. But my greatest accomplishment is joining the most exceptional DAF family in the world. Keep up the great job that you and your team are doing. Thanks, Calvin Yosef Murray. And now on to today's DAF. In all of the Shabbos, when it says Potter, it means Potter Aval Asr, it's Asr Midar Besides, there are three exceptions to the rule, and one of them is what we had yesterday in the Mishnah. That is, a proving sat down by a door and he trapped a deer. And his friend came and sat by him and created a second layer. His friend hasn't accomplished anything. He's not chayiv. Even if Reuven stands up and walks away, Shimon doesn't have to get up and walk away. He's not chayiv. The Mishnah says a mushal, the person who tied a deer to a doorknob, let's say, inside the house, he's allowed to close the front door. What if the deer becomes untied to the door? He doesn't have to open up the front door. It's already closed. He wasn't over. So too, Shimon doesn't have to get up and walk away. The second case is Mapis Mursa. Removing fluids from a boil, popping a zit. If the intent is just to take out the fluids, it's mutter l'chatchila because of the tsar, unless the person has intent to create an opening for to, to take out the fluids and to introduce oxygen inside. That would be asr. Just like we say, you're allowed to lift up a muktzal needle to take out a thorn. The third thing is to capture a non-poisonous snake, that it shouldn't bite people, it shouldn't bother people. Same way that you're allowed to take some sort of kli and put it over a flame so that it shouldn't burn down the house to cover waste of a child or to cover a scorpion. But if you do it to trap the scorpion for medicinal purposes, that is usur. And with that, we finish Perek The Following Perek is called Shmoinish Ratzim, the H Ratzim that emit Tuma after they're dead, as you see in the picture. These are considered, according to Rashi, Bimino Nitzayd. People like to trap these animals because they have value, whether for their skin or other medicinal purposes. Therefore, if you trap them, you are chayiv. And if you bruise them, you are chayiv. Now, what are we talking about? How many of them? All of them? In order to be chayiv for bruising, you have to create blood. Not that it comes out because if it came out, that would be shaykhet, netilas and shama. We're referring to between the flesh and the skin. So it has to have a thicker skin. When it comes to tuma of the Shmanish Ratzim, there's a big machloik. It's according to Rabbi Yechim Nuri, the skin of a sheretz is not included in the tuma because it's so thick. Therefore, all these eight Shratzim have Chabalah and Shabbos as well. According to Chachamim, only four out of these Shratzim have tuma, and those are the four on the left side because their thi- skin is thinner. Now, according to Abayim Shmuel, there's a machloik between Rabbi Yechim Nuri and Chachamim in Shabbos, according to Rabbi Yechim Nuri, all eight Shratzim, your Chayev, for Chabal, and according to Chacham, only four, the four in the right. According to Rav Ada, according to Rabba, and Rav Ada, it's only in Toma that Chachamim say, there's a distinction between the four. Because the Pasuk says, Eila, Hatmeim, the extra hey, these are the ones, and the Pasuk is closer, the four that are closer to these words are the ones that are Tomei. But when it comes to Shabbos, just like Rabbi Yechim Menuri, all eight, there's an Isr Chabala. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it depends on how thick the skin is. We can feel it. It goes by Argosha. So therefore, a lizard is similar to the Chaylet and has thick skin and this Chabura. How do we know this concept that the Chabura has to be something that never goes back to its original? We learn from the Pasuk, Just like a Kushi, his skin never changes colors. The word Venomer, the Gemara learns, is not referring to a leopard, but rather to the word Tamura, it doesn't go back. Rabbi Lezer learns from the Elam in the Mishkan, just like Elam, there was an Atilas Neshama, you killed it, therefore it doesn't matter what kind of animal we're referring to, it could be the largest animal, like an elephant, a camel, to the smallest animal, a louse, your over if you kill it. Chacham say no. Elam are part of a rabba, they reproduce, but lice do not reproduce according to the Gemara, halakhically, they, at least halakhically they don't reproduce, and therefore, they're not included in this halacha. You're allowed to kill them. And the fact that there's a louse that the Gemara says, zan at to the eggs of Kinim, the Gemara says, according to this man, you have to say, Beit is just a name 
of a certain species of lice that are called basic kingdom, not referring to the eggs of the louse. A flea, a little fly, according to Rebbe Lezer, you'd chayev and say that because he holds, even if ain b'mino nitzay, you don't typically trap a fly for a productive reason, you're still chayev. According to Rabbanon, ain b'mino nitzay, you are a potter. But of course, killing the fly, you would be over, you would be chayev. All other shratzim, besides the shmona shratzim, like a worm, a, a snake, a scorpion, they don't have thick skin. And therefore, there's no chabala because the blood does not come between the flesh and the skin. Typically, Rashi says, there's no use for their skins. People don't trap them. And therefore, it depends whether there's a use for the trapping or there's no use. Taisvis just doesn't understand Rashi. And in a very rare instance, Rabbeinu Tam says, we have to erase Rashi completely. And the Gemara says, this goes according to the sheet of Rabbi Shimon. Potter, since there's no positive constructive act in this malacha, therefore you potter. Some say it's going on this other halacha, matas mursa, removing fluid from a boil. It's not a constructive malacha. Some say it's about trapping a snake. There's no constructive, you don't want to trap the snake, you just don't want it to bother you. Shmuel says if you take a fish out of water, if there's a size of a cella that becomes dry under its fin, that constitutes killing it. Even if you see that it's alive and you throw it back in the water, it will eventually die from this. Therefore, you're over, you killed it. And they explain, it means even, not only if it's dry, but even if it has some sort of mucusy liquid attached to it when you touch it, that's also considered killing it. Have a wonderful day.